Hey guys, so I know this video is coming out a little bit late given how the final episode of Season 4 of Rick and Morty came out about a week ago and everything moves at like a million miles an hour on YouTube, but as they always say, better late than never. This is just going to be me talking slash rambling about the season finale of Season 4 of Rick and Morty. What I think worked about it, what I think didn't really work about it, and why I feel in my own personal and very not so humble opinion that it is probably one of the highest highlights of the entire show and like one of the show's most standout moments in the whole series. I really only became a dedicated fan of Rick and Morty around halfway through season three. I was one of those like edgelords out there that was just like, you know, everybody says this show's amazing so I'm just gonna go out of my way to not watch it because it's just gonna be overhyped and all that. And then I ended up giving in and watching it like everybody else and like everybody else I loved it. I loved the witticisms, I loved the intelligence of the writing, I loved the really wacky animation a lot of the times and I liked how sucked in I got into the characters and the story. I liked it for the same reasons that pretty much anybody likes Rick and Morty. I just love how subversive and intelligent the writing of Rick and Morty is and I also love how much the characters themselves progress from season to season and it is actually done in quite a gradual and very organic feeling way. It's not one of those shows where a character just stays in one particular mindset and then they just never change. It's not quite like it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Like the characters in Rick and Morty are, for lack of a better term, kind of terrible, but they do have to progress at a certain point. And that was the reason why I didn't really like season one all that much. Like, season one is my least favorite of the seasons because it's the one that feels the most, for lack of a better term, edgelordy. It felt like it was just trying to tread on people's toes and, you know, upset people's sensibilities and sensitivities and be really politically incorrect just for the sake of it. Like, not all the time. Like, a lot of the time, the, you know, anti TPC humor was really, really effective and again, really, really intelligently written. Like the Meeseeks episode is one of my favorite episodes in the whole season. And there were plenty of other aspects of season one that I liked as well. But for me, the show really hit its stride, as a lot of shows do, in season two. And that's something that happens a lot of times with shows, where you'll have season one as kind of them throwing whatever at the wall and seeing what sticks. And then season two, they figured out what the strengths of the show are, what makes the show great, what makes it resonate. And season two of Rick and Morty definitely does that as well. You see the strengths of Rick as a character, as well as his very, very prevalent weaknesses, show themselves and they develop them a lot more in season two. Then you get season three and again you're seeing more progression. You know the family ends up going to therapy at some point and Rick and Beth are constantly bad mouthing the therapist and constantly reducing her to you know this person that is a complete hack and they don't need in their life even though us the viewer can very definitely see that they clearly need it. This family is incredibly toxic and there are a lot of episodes of Rick and Morty that are talking about that and that to me really leans into the proper strengths of this season finale of season four of Rick and Morty. Like, just talking about the episode itself, the episode uh, revolves around uh, one of the earlier established subplots in the previous season, where Beth is given the offer by Rick to have herself cloned, and then she herself can go off into space, can, you know, explore the galaxy, explore the universe, do whatever she wants while her clone stays at home with the family and maintains the home front and all that kind of stuff. This episode deals is basically the resolution to that mystery because that episode leads off with us not actually knowing if Beth said yes to Rick's offer or not. And so that is the primary focus of this episode. The, it's like the whole big, you know, galactic empire coming down and trying to destroy slash enslave Earth like they did in the previous season. Like all of that stuff is benched for the most part. That is not the focus of this episode. The focus really comes from the dynamics between the characters and that has always been this show's greatest strength. Like we we get the return of Phoenix Person, which is also a really, really nice callback, I thought, and also handled really, really well in both a funny and kind of a dramatic way in the episode. And you also get the reappearance of Tammy, who was Summer's old friend, who's also the revealed to be working for this big evil empire. And again, it was great seeing those two characters show up, but they are not the main focus of the episode. So we get the reveal right in the opening that Beth was in fact cloned by Rick, and the, uh, the Beth that's out in space says, oh yeah, my dad left this clone for me down on Earth. And then we actually get the reveal of like, oh no, wait, Rick puts a self-destruct thing inside of Beth's neck or this version of Beth's neck. So we're like, did he clone her? Is she the clone? Like, we don't actually know. So most of the episode is dealing with 
both Beths meeting each other, the, the clone Beth and the original Beth actually meeting up. One's a badass and one is still kind of the stay-at-home mom. And them just trying their best to try and get an answer out of Rick as to who is the clone, who is the real one, all this kind of stuff. We get the reveal at the very end of the episode after a pretty fucking badass fight between Rick and Phoenix person that ends with, of course, Jerry saving the day through his own stupidity, which is always fun to see. And of course, lots of wacky, wacky hijinks with an invisibility belt with Summer and, and Morty, which is always funny. The big reveal at the end of the episode is that Rick himself doesn't actually know which of the two Beths was the real one and which one is the clone because he erased his memory. And then the episode ends on one of the strongest notes I feel any of the episodes of Rick and Morty have ever ended on, which is simply both Beths and the rest of the family just walking out on Rick saying that they don't care. They don't care which Beth is the real one. They don't care which one is the clone and they don't don't care that Rick can find out for them because that has been one of the core dynamics between his character and the rest of their characters is the power that he has exuded over them and in this instance the power he has over them is finding out oh hey I know which Beth is the real one you're gonna have to stick around and rely on me to find out which one and the rest of the family is just like no fuck you we don't care anymore and the summer outright says like stop making your lack of control over this family our problem we don't care anymore of course Rick at first shrugs it off and then he plays the memory of which Beth is the real one and finds out that he deliberately swapped them around so even after finding out he doesn't know which Beth is real and which is not and he ends up conceding to himself that he is a terrible father and that is one of the biggest character development moments we have ever seen from Rick. And to me, that speaks to the greatest strength of this episode and why, despite the fact that season four itself was a little bit hit and miss a lot of the time, this season finale was so strong. Watching this season of Rick and Morty, I saw a lot of people that saying, oh, it's shit now, it's terrible now, it's awful. To me, it never really felt like Dan Harmon lost the magic here. It did, it did just kind of feel like some of the episodes were lacking in that sense of brilliance that the earlier seasons had. Like, you know, you got the um, fifth dimensional wall break that was that whole train episode, and that one was just like such a mindfuck. It was just so insane how many fourth walls they were breaking and how insane and insanely clever that episode was. I mean, that is another brilliant episode in this season. But for the most part, yeah, a lot of the episodes just kind of felt a bit flat. They, they were funny, don't get me wrong. They all had their laugh out loud jokes in there, but they didn't really feel like they had the same kind of genius, the same kind of wit, the same kind of direction and purpose behind them that episodes in the earlier seasons of Rick and Morty did. It mostly felt like filler. And I was honestly okay with that. I was alright with that for the most part. And I was kind of worried that the season finale here would feel kind of vapid and empty and not really all that fulfilling, like for me the season finale of season three was. But then we got to it and I suddenly it all suddenly clicked into place of the direction that the showrunners were taking this show. And to me, it is brilliant. It is a brilliant progression of the characters to me. Rick has always been the dominant patriarch of this family. He is the one who has dominated everybody. Like, you know, he is fed off of Morty's naivety. He's fed off of Summer's desperation to be included in his life. He's fed off of Beth's desperation for validation from her father. He is very much the most toxic element in this family. For lack of a better term, him and Jerry are both the toxic elements here, but Jerry isn't as toxic as Rick, despite the fact that he is a complete and total bone-dead idiot that ruins everything for everyone, but he is still not as toxic as Rick because he's not actively pursuing ways of keeping the family under his control. And that is something that Rick does, and that is something I feel the earlier seasons kind of suffered from. It came close to almost framing Rick as ultimately good and beneficial in his naked and complete and total unashamed, unapologetic abuse of his family. It still kind of framed him as being the good guy, but this episode very clearly states that no, he is not the good guy here. He is the person who is the most of a drag on the cohesion of the family. He is the one who is pulling the others back. Take for instance Morty's character. Morty has always held on to his, for lack of a better term, kind of naive, innocent, hopeful, optimistic view 
of humanity and of the universe. He's always, you know, just just take the dragon episode in this season where, you know, he's kind of got that hopeful, optimistic, childlike perception and asks Rick to get him a dragon, essentially, which is a very childish thing to do. It's like, you know, he could go anywhere in the universe, they could do anything, and so he wants something as, well, basic as a dragon. And then he finds out, you know, dragons are these massive perverts and all this kind of stuff. And yeah, that episode has got one or two slightly uncomfortable scenes involving, for lack of a better term, dragon orgies, but we won't get into that. That just kind of showcases Morty's innocent outlook on Rick's adventures. And part of the character arcs throughout the, the whole show is Morty kind of losing that innocence, losing that naivety and growing up. But at the same time, Rick is trying to enforce his cynical, bitter, and very, very toxic mindset onto Morty, but Morty himself doesn't ever really give in to it, because he shouldn't give in to it. He should maintain some aspect of that optimistic hopefulness that Rick is trying to beat out of him with all of these misadventures that they go on. And that is, again, another aspect of his character that we see shine through at the end of this episode. Throughout most of this episode, we're seeing Morty and Summer bicker amongst themselves, but then they end up working together and helping Beth bring down the evil empire. We see that cohesion of the family happen without Rick's influence. We see those two working together without Rick really having to do anything to enforce that. They do it themselves, which is just a sign of how far these characters have come, how far they have matured. Morty is not as naive naive as he used to be in the past, but that doesn't mean he has to be a complete and total cynical alcoholic douchebag like Rick is. And that is something that just speaks to the strength of the characters that is illustrated in this season finale. Summer, for all of her character flaws, again, values the rest of her family outside of Rick more than she values him. Jerry is probably never going to change in any great capacity, but again, he is someone he did kind of save the day more than Rick did in this episode. So that is ultimately why I feel this season finale is one of the strongest moments in the whole show is because it is forcing Rick to see the consequences of his actions. He can't control his family anymore and he is now having to admit to himself how much of a terrible person he has been to them. And although it kind of has a bit of a double-edged sword with that final line that he gives when he says he's a terrible father but at least he's a good friend and you see a phoenix person there and he's like trying to rehabilitate him I guess. We see that there but ultimately Rick is going to have to face that sense of hollow depression and emptiness inside of himself and he is going to be faced with these two options. He can either fall back on his old ways and try his damnedest to bring the family back under his control and ultimately I feel like he will fail if you do that because we see how far the family has progressed or he can actually try to change. He can go the Bojack Horseman route where he actually has to take genuine hard steps to improve himself for the sake of this family that he has let down. And I really, really hope that the next season of Rick and Morty goes down that route. I want to see Rick improve. I want to see him get better. It's like this episode almost feels like a rebuttal to all of those angsty edgelords online that are basically saying, no, Rick's perfect the way he is. He shouldn't have to change for everybody. You know, the family should just do whatever he says because he's always right about stuff because he's the genius, you know, and, you know, depression and, you know, alcoholism and being a fucking douchebag, that's just the price of genius, man. That's just the price of being smart. In which case, no, being a douchebag is not an end product of being intelligent. It's just you being a fucking douchebag. It's just you being an abusive alcoholic. As they outright say in one of the earlier episodes, The only connection between your unquestionable intelligence and the sickness destroying your family is that everyone in your family, you included, use intelligence to justify sickness. This episode feels like a rebuttal to the people that say that he is justified in his douchebaggery. And this episode outright says, no, he has to change if he wants this family to remain supportive of him. It is so refreshing to see that in this show, and I'm so thankful that Dan Harmon and the other writers went this route instead of just doubling down on Rick's douchebag tendencies and his alcoholism and the level to which he is able to abuse the people around him. Because it will get to the point when if he doesn't, like, move past this angry stage in his life and doesn't try his best to improve himself or his loved ones, then what reason do we have to be on his side anymore? Like, what reason do we have to really be on board with this guy? 
with this douchebag. He has to change. And I hope that uh, Dan Harmon and the writers continue down this path that they have established. Again, I really, really like the season finale. Like, season four was, again, a bit hit and miss, but the season finale definitely brought the whole thing home for me. This episode had, like, everything I wanted to see in Rick and Morty. It has all the strengths of it. It's got the insanely imaginative and kick-ass sci-fi action. It's got the really memorable characters. It's got the friggin' hilarious jokes in there. I loved every aspect of it. I thought it was brilliant. In terms of nitpicks I have, I thought there was like a bit of a frenetic pace to it. Like it was going a bit too quickly in parts. Like Tammy's death, it comes about once, then all of a sudden she's okay then she just gets killed in about half a second later. It's just like, okay, like, I know the focus is meant to be on our main heroes and everything, but Jesus, like, you know, pretty quick way to kill off one of your more intimidating antagonists, but yeah, sure, whatever. Stuff like that is just nitpicks for me. I really want to see where the show goes. I want to see what the next season brings. If there's any comments that you guys had, was there anything that you didn't like about this episode or about the season? Was there anything that you liked that I didn't get to touch on? Whatever your thoughts are, leave them in the comments below. Hit the like button, subscribe. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.